So today's episode is going to be extra special to me because I'm talking to someone not only from from my home in Nebraska, but also radiation therapy. <laughs> so this will be really great. Um, so I'm going to just say a few things about Brandon Crow, who I've got on with me today, but I will ultimately let you introduce yourself. So Brandon, whether he wanted to do this or not, he kind of like took my class under his wing and was really brave and took eight girls to Chicago for a conference. And I don't know if you've ever done it since, <laughs> but um, <laughs> you haven't. Oh man, we ruined it. Um, but that was, no. <laughs> so I would say Brandon is an incredible mentor. Um, I'm excited to just catch up because I probably haven't one seen you since then. And it's been probably, gosh, seven plus years. Um, and then also just to kind of know where you are in your career, because not that you're that much older than me, but you were definitely one of the therapists. One I loved, was it Midwest? Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, loved my rotation there, a small one Linac clinic, but you and Emily both really just, I don't know if it's because it was later in the year when I was probably needing the more confidence, but you guys just like really pushed me and they're like, okay, you're going to be a therapist soon. And then you're on your own. So I am just eternally grateful. I loved my experience there. So with all of that, I will just let you introduce yourself and then we'll dive into therapy specific. Yeah, I'm Brandon Crow. I grew up in central Nebraska, um, moved down to the Lincoln area, started going to school, ended up coming up to Omaha, um, you know, went, went through a Methodist college for x-ray school and then went on to the therapy program at the University of Nebraska Medical Center. Um, really just kind of wound up in the field. I, you know, so many people have these crazy stories about, you know, their, their, their mom had cancer or sister or cousin. And strangely enough, I just kind of wound up becoming a radiation therapist. I didn't even really know about radiation therapy until x-ray school, which is, you know, which is a good thing uh, <laughs> for me. I, you know, I didn't, I didn't have one of these familial draws to the field, but I just, I kinda... can, yeah, I can relate to that. I always thought when I interviewed for school, I was like, I don't have anything good to share. Like I've never really, I mean, it was amazing that I didn't really have anyone close to me that had a cancer story, but I was similar to you. I think I just found out about radiation therapy when I was job shadowing to like, know if I wanted to do x-ray. Exactly. And I was like, wow, this is really cool. You don't just like take a quick chest x-ray and then your patient's gone. Like you actually get to build a relationship with them. Yeah. Yeah. It's really cool about our job. Yeah. I love that. Okay. Well, that's good. So see, it gives people hope. You don't always have to know what you're doing. Sometimes you wind up in a career super random, but obviously you still love it because you're still practicing in the clinic. Yep. Absolutely. Awesome. Okay. So would you say, um, well, you already covered my question about how did you get here? So, um, what would you say you like the most about being a radiation therapist? And then what is your least favorite? Yeah, my uh, favorite thing about being a radiation therapist is just getting to meet so many cool people, um, you know, especially our patients. And, you know, like you had mentioned, we get to spend a little bit more time with our patients than we did in, you know, x-ray school. In you know, in x-ray, you know, you might spend five or 10 minutes with a patient or, you know, in some of the other modalities, you might spend 20 or 30 minutes, you know, if you're doing you know, one of the more in-depth studies or something like that. But usually they're, they're kind of talking with the doctor, or, you know, or whatever. And you don't really get to spend a lot of time. When I started going to the uh, radiation therapy, you know, in x-ray school, I got to spend a week in the radiation therapy department. I just realized right away, like every day you get to spend 10 or 15 minutes, sometimes a little bit more with the patient, talking with them and it's not always about, you know, the business, like, what do you, you know, what they're there for? You get, you do get to yeah. conversate with them and get to know them a little better. And most of our patients are coming to us for several weeks at a time. So that's gotta be the, the coolest part about being a radiation therapist. Yeah. I love that too. That's what I always tell people. I'm like, we genuinely, and if you really hit it off, like I can name some of my favorite patients throughout the years, because you just naturally really connect with people 
And then there's patients that, I don't know if it's like the sound of my voice. And they're like, I don't want her to treat me. <laughs> and that's okay too. <laughs> um, so what's the least favorite? Uh, the least favorite, man, I don't know. I don't know if I have a least favorite. Mm -hmm. um, you know, of course, sometimes we, you know, we, we have patients that are at the end of their life. You know, and so sure that that can be said, and and that's a, lot, a big question that I get from a lot of people that I'm telling. You know, like, they're like, "Hey, Brandon, what do you do?" And I tell them, and you know, their immediate reaction is, "Oh, that's got to be so sad and stuff." And yeah, sure. From time to time, we do we do meet patients that are at the end of their life, and it's a good and a bad thing. You know, it it kind of kind of stinks to see you know that part of the life cycle, but at the same time, it's kind of a blessing, you know, to remind you that we're not, we're not here forever. And, you know, it kind of encourages you to, to live your life like it's your last, you know? Yeah, definitely. No, that's so good. So what would you say? Well, one, this is kind of a hard question for like our modality, I think, because like x-ray people will be like, oh, you're just button pushers. But a lot of people don't actually know what a radiation therapist is. Like you say, I'm a radiation therapist, I treat cancer patients. And then they're like, oh, you, you do chemo. And I'm like, no, no, no. Like, yes, that's cancer, but that's like the other side of the cancer treatment. So a lot of people, one, don't even really know what a radiation therapist is, but for the people that do know, what do you think is one of the biggest misconceptions that they might just assume about our job that you don't disagree or that you disagree with? Yeah. I think the biggest misconception is, is that we're nurses. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, we, we get that all the time or, or techs, you know, and I, I'm not offended by being called a tech or a nurse, you know, cause they're both, you know, great professionals too, but uh, that's gotta be the biggest thing. Second or third would be that since I'm the, usually the only guy working in the, as far as the therapists go, I would say the next misconception is that I'm the doctor. Sure. And <laughs> all the, all the other radiation therapists that I work with, which are all females that very rarely have I worked in a clinic where there's two guys, but all the, you know, all the other radiation therapists, the females, you know, they're always kind of, you know, like, uh, you know, whenever a patient calls me the doctor, it's always kind of like, Ugh. sometimes it's kind of fun to, to play into that a little bit, you know, just to <laughs> oh, for sure. That's great. A little dig in, but that's got to be another one of the misconceptions is just because I'm the guy, you know, and it's the older patients usually that are like, oh, he's a man. He must be the doctor. But, yeah. And I guess in Nebraska, when I went to school, I would say a majority of the rat onks were men. There were some females, yeah. but I would say there, there were a lot of men that were the physician. So sure. yeah. yeah, so that's okay. They also have cancer, right? We can only just be like, they just, it's okay. They're just not yeah. thinking right right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, that just reminded me randomly. I was at, I can't remember what clinic, but I was there for like weeks at a time, right? Doing my rotations. This one patient thought I was the linen person because as a student, you kind of do like all of that. <laughs> They're like, go, oh, there's that. There's the linen lady again. I was like, oh, that's so sad. Why is she helping me with the treatment today? <laughs> yeah, she's she's a jack of all trades. Oh man! As a student, um, I remember it was actually when I was a student at the clinic that I'm working at now. Uh, the first day that I came to the rotation, uh, one of the patients I came in the room. One of the patients said, "Oh, and who's this guy?" And without hesitation. One of the therapists said, oh, that's Brandon. He, you know, when we're short staffed down here, he, he works in the kitchen upstairs, the cafeteria. When we're short staffed, he comes down and helps out. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Oh man, that's so fun. Um, okay, so I would say, kind of referring back to what you said, most people are like, oh, that must be a sad job. But ultimately I could, I don't have kids. I love treating pediatric patients when I was in the clinic. But I am curious what your answer is to how you stay motivated to go to work every single day. Because sometimes, it, like, if it's a really hard, heavy week, you have a bunch of end of life patients, like, that can be hard. Or people are always telling you your job is depressing and then you start to question it yourself. So, how do you stay motivated and you're eager to go to work every day? Yeah, um, that's a great question. Um, 
I have two answers. Um, one would be the answer that I would say for any job is, that, you know, I've got a family to support. Sure. And, you know, my wife and kids, they're counting on me, uh, you know, to bring home the bacon, so to speak. <laughs> and secondly, and maybe more importantly, is the patients that are counting on me every day to get their treatment. Yeah. You know, that's what brings me back every single day. Um, even the ones that are making those days hard, making those weeks heavy, mm -hmm. uh, to use your words, those are the, really the patients that really need my help. Yeah. And we've got a great team and, um, you know, if I'm not showing up, then that's making their, you know, their week that much harder too. And so I guess thirdly for my coworkers, you know, just being there because people are counting on me. That'd be, you know, what brings me back every day. Right. Yeah. yeah. I love that. I never, I truly never struggled going into clinic. I don't know what it was, but for some reason and nothing against x-ray, but for whatever reason, I just, I genuinely didn't love it compared to radiation therapy. So yeah. I mean, I enjoyed pieces of x-ray, right? And it's not like I, oh, I was dragging my feet during school or when I was working PRN or anything, but it was just like a whole different passion when you like find something that you actually love. So yeah, those are all such good answers. Um, so I guess we've kind of touched on this from like from a few different questions, but what would you say is the most rewarding part? Um. Yeah, I guess coming back to just the, the, the people that we get to meet every day. Um, there's, there's a lot of patients that come in that, uh, you know, they're just in such a weird place in their life. And, you know, you get to meet some of the craziest people too. Like, <laughs> thinking of this, uh, when it's something that happened this past week. Uh, you know, we have this patient that, uh, you know, it's just sort of bizarre and, you know, and I was like, oh, I, don't, I think she's got messy hair, but I don't think she's really that weird. And every time I, every time I sort of defend a patient like that, the next time I meet them, I'm just like, oh my God, I just eat my words. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, she was, she was, uh, we're getting her set up for her treatment and she was asking the student you know, do you guys ever, you guys ever uh, worry about the toxins? And I was kind of like, what is she talking about? You know? And I was like, oh, and I could tell the student was like, you know, he had no idea. Right. And he's like, oh, you mean, you mean COVID? And she's like, no, no, the toxins. And she kind of points to our Linac, the treatment machine. And he, the student, he was just like, oh my gosh, I don't know. I don't know what she's talking about. And, I, you know, and then I realized she was talking about radiation you know so I was like let me take this one you know <laughs> right I was like, oh, do you, are you do you mean the, the radiation and she's like yeah you know and if you want us to hear it called the toxins that's the first time I've heard anybody call it the toxins and you know it was just kind of cute yeah you know, it wasn't a it wasn't a stupid question no but it was just so out of left field that it was kind of like what <laughs> you know <laughs> And that is actually a really good point about a lot of patients know what x-ray is, right? Or they've heard of a CT or an MRI. Like that's again, more like normal conversation in like the medical yeah. field. But even if you have cancer, like maybe you've gone through weeks of chemo and you, most people don't step foot into a radiation department unless a loved one has had cancer or they themselves do. So to see this big machine, like you can be told it's radiation, but it's a lot of educating the patient. So I think that is true. Yeah, you can, I guess toxins, it's, I mean, it's killing cells. So there's that. <laughs> oh, great. Um, where do you see yourself in five to 10 years? Actually, how long have you been a therapist first? Uh, this will be year 14. 14. Okay. So do you think you'll obviously stay in the clinic until you retire? You know, there has been fleeting thoughts of you know, maybe going into sales or I don't know, like training. Um, you know, we've 
started using a lot of new uh, equipment in our department lately. And so we've had some trainers coming in and out and, uh, you know, they'll spend a week or so. And I'm like, that'd be kind of a cool job. You know, um, I like to, I, I like a different scene, mm-hmm. you know, and you don't get that in radiation therapy, you know, um, for the most part, you're kind of in the lower level of a hospital or maybe in a freestanding clinic. You don't, you don't travel, you know, so, um, you know, I, I like, I like the idea of, you know, maybe being able to see the sunshine a little bit more. Definitely. I know it is true. We're kind of generally speaking. Yeah. We don't really see that much daylight. Like there might be a window in the department, but hopefully it's like in the waiting room for the patients or something, but yeah, we're kind of like in the dungeon. Mm -hmm. I do enjoy the work. Yeah. But yeah, I, I wouldn't say that uh, if I look at, you know, I'm 42, I've got, you know, several years to, to work. You know, I could, I, I wouldn't, I'd be really surprised if, you know, if I did this, you know, as a therapist right. for, for, you know, 25 years or so, because I, I do like to kind of mix it up a little bit and try different parts. Yeah. Of the, yeah. Of the radiation therapy. Speak. Definitely. Okay. So kind of just thinking of that, just like your different scenery, every clinic is obviously ran a little bit different. Um, so do you rotate through like CT SIM or do you guys have a designated SIM therapist? We um, typically we, we rotate through, we have two Linux that we rotate through. We started to have one dedicated CT. We closed a clinic in another part of Omaha. Okay. And one of the therapists that was out there, she's now working in the CT sim. And then usually one of us kind of rotates back there. To, uh, Very good. Well, for anyone listening, that's maybe x-ray or CT, even MRI, like usually if you go x-ray to one of those modalities, you might not then switch to radiation therapy, but for anyone in undergrad that maybe has no idea what they want to do with their life, why would you encourage someone to go in to our field? Yeah, it's, um, unfortunately, we're probably going to have, you know, job security for a long, long time. Yeah. We always tell our patients if they come up with a cure for cancer and and suddenly we don't have jobs, every single one of us have said it, you know, we'll gladly go look for a new job. Amen. Um, So, you know, I'd say there's always work. Mm -hmm. Um, when you come to work, you, you feel like you accomplish something every day. You, you know, patients tell you, thank you. And, you know, it's, it's very rewarding yeah. for that from your patients that you are helping them. You know, I hear a lot of people talk about, you know, having a thankless job and I would say radiation therapy is definitely not one of those, you know? Yeah, you know, I agree with walking that. Away feeling <laughs> good about what you've done every day. So that's really cool. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Do you guys, would you say you're on call? Like, I was always like stressed out about call, like as a student, like, oh my gosh, you have to be on call and you like treat patients alone because it's very much a team environment. That's one thing I also loved is you always have a partner in crime while you're treating patients. Um, So do you, would you say, I mean, some people might for real have anxiety and that could like steer them away, right? Like I never want to be on call, but would you say that is like a big deal? When, uh, when we have a new hire, we typically don't even, they typically don't even take call for, you know, six months or so. Sure. And, uh, you know, if, if they were not comfortable, you know, yeah. and they know that they can call any one of us if, you know, if they were ever, um, you know, oh, I really don't want to be on call, you know, you just don't get put into that situation. Right. We wouldn't, we wouldn't want anybody coming into the clinic if Sure. You know, if they were, you know, that's what we would work on. Exactly. Uh, get you more comfortable with the machine or with warm up procedure or with this treatment or let's, you know, write down some notes for the setup or anything like that to make yeah. it, you know, gonna, you know, a seamless process. And if, you know, we have to have somebody else come in and help, you know, there'd be plenty of people that would be glad to. 
Agreed. Yeah, no, that's, that's amazing. Oh, this makes me kind of miss the clinic. I'm not going to lie. Get my hands back in there. Oh, but yeah, you just never know. I'm excited to see where your career takes you though. Cause I think you would do amazing outside of the clinic, but I know how great you are with patients too. So it's like always kind of like, oh man, which way do you go? But I still just being in the oncology space, I couldn't agree more with your comment about how it's so rewarding because even back in school, like there was this one patient that I will never forget. Um, he actually declines having a student go into his radiation oncology consult, which is obviously totally up to the patient, right? Like we're students and you have to respect that. Um, and then when I rotated up to like the chemo floor, I guess I don't really know what unit it was or whatever, that same exact patient was there getting one of his first chemo treatments. And I was like determined because he, he was a, a pancreas patient, yeah. pancreatic cancer, which is for those of us that know, like that's a really, honestly, it's a terrible diagnosis. Um, so I was so determined to just make him smile. Like, I feel like in the clinic, I rarely would talk. Of course, I would answer patients' questions about their treatment and like radiation and cancer and all of that. But ultimately, I feel like my goal was typically to connect with them on a more personal level or talk about their hobbies or family. And so that is the one patient, like I did get him to smile. And it was when, <laughs> and it was actually, we just randomly were talking about basketball. So I guess that would have been like 2012 when, um, uh, Creighton was like a legit contender in the NCAA tournament or something. So we were like actually able to talk about something outside of his diagnosis. So I do just being a small piece of someone's cancer story is like the most rewarding part of our job, I think. Occasionally we'll have uh, female therapists that, that don't want a guy taking care of them. Sure. Yeah, like before I'm, I'm the only guy in our clinic. <clears throat> um, and so, you know, on those occasions where the patient is like, oh, I don't want, I don't want any, any males taken care of. I know it's not personal. Right. You know, a little part of me does take it personally. And I'm not, you know, I, I'm, I'm not offended, but I do try, you know, if I can walk the patient back to the treatment room so that the girls can take care of her. Yeah. In that, you know, 15 seconds that I spend with them, I try to just kill them with kindness because I just, I want them to know that, you know, whatever their reasoning of not wanting a male taking care of them, you know, I try it so hard to like redeem for the, for the males in healthcare, you know, for whatever happened that makes them not want that. I, you know, I just try my best to just show them that. We're, we're here to help them too. You know? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's incredible. Oh, well, is there anything else that you want to share? Like just a good story, like one of your favorite stories, whether it was a sad one or a success, maybe just funny things that happen in the department in general, anything that you're like, oh man, Kelsey yeah. didn't ask me this, but I really wanted to talk about it. There, you know, like I said before, we see some of the craziest things and you know, if, if this needs to be edited later, by all means, <laughs> I guess one of the weirdest things that happened one day was, you know, I went to the, to the men's dressing room to, to find out where this patient was, you know, we're like, okay, he's supposed to be here at 10, you know, we see that he's checked in, where is he, you know, so I went into the dressing room, and I said, Mr. So-and-so, you know, are you, you know, are you doing okay, and there's two areas of the dressing room, one where they wait, one where the actual changing rooms are, could hear grunting oh no like oh are you, are you okay in there and it became very apparent right away that they were trying to relieve themselves <laughs> and i was like no no i can't do that in there no, I, I gotta go and i'm like and then I, more grunting and i'm like no no if you're grunting we have time to get down to the bathroom let's just <laughs> and just like you know i i just don't i, I couldn't understand why that was happening Oh. no one wants to clean that up after the fact <laughs> uh you know another one that was kind of funny that i always think about and it's not the funniest story or most you know but i always think of this uh, 
you know, one day we had a patient that was a patient right before lunchtime. And so, you know, like if one machine's done, you know, somebody else would come in just to kind of help everybody get the lunch on time. So I think there were two or three therapists inside the treatment room. And we were kind of, you know, starting to talk about, well, hey, what's for lunch and this and that. And the patient we had at the time, she was like, oh, there's this great pizza joint, you know, and well, so we kind of all decided to go to this pizza place. And um, so a little backstory on this patient, she's covered almost from head to toe in, in tattoos, mostly Tinkerbell tattoos. Okay. And, you know, we're like, hey, let's go, you know, let's, let's go try this, uh, this pizza place that she was talking about. So we get done with her treatment. We start to leave and she's like, we realize that she's sort of invited herself along you know, which is fine, but kind of awkward. <laughs> right. We're walking out of the clinic and one of the therapists is like, okay, I can fit four people. And this patient was like, oh, Brandon, you can ride with me. And I was just like, oh my gosh, this is so weird. And the girl's kind of joking. We're like, oh yeah, yeah, just go, you ride with her. And I was like, oh yeah. my gosh, they did that to me. They just <laughs> pushed you right in. <laughs> and she has like this Dodge Charger that's kind of souped up. It was a cool car, but it is it is covered from bumper to bumper in Tinkerbell decals. What the heck? And so on the way, you know, it was awkward enough. On the way to this pizza place, she has to show me how fast her car is. And so here I am, I'm trying not to be seen in this thing. And she's just hot rodding all over town. And I was just like, oh, my God. It was, yeah, I don't know. It was just super. Oh, did she work at Disney once or what? I don't know. <laughs> fascination, I think. Oh, I mean, good for her. I, I don't even know if there's like one thing that I love that much. So oh. Oh. she, yeah, wasn't afraid of Tinkerbell. Showing, showing her love for Tinkerbell. I love that. Aw. All right. Well, I just like to end every episode. It's a very basic question. It can be obviously our radiation therapy field related or just super general, totally whatever you prefer, but what are you grateful for? Yeah. Um, I'm grateful for the fact that we get to see, you know, we get to see people at their worst and their best in our field. Um, you know, we get to see people when they've been recently diagnosed with cancer, which is terrible. Mm -hmm. We get to see people when, when they're cured of that terrible disease. Um, you know, and 99% of people's memories are of when their emotions are at the extreme. Yeah. Great accomplishments. Um, you know, terrible things that have happened, death in the family. Um, we get the opportunity every day to make memories with people, you know, when they're at their highs and their lows. And, you know, I probably put a, a radiation therapist up there with most jobs of, as far as like the amount of opportunities we get to make a profound impact on somebody's life. And that's just, that's super cool to me to, to have that chance, you know, every single day to, to kind of make their day special. Yeah. That's incredible. I love that. All right. Well, that's all I have. Um, thank you so much for your time today. Absolutely. Kelsey, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, thanks. <laughs>